I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. So in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about was your relationship enough to revisit? Will that person think about things and come back? Yeah, and I think the secondary question here is how long does it really take to be attached to someone and what does it take to really be attached? You know, many times when I hear this question, it's, well, did we have enough good memories? Do you think that they were attached enough to me for that attachment to really, you know, allow them to reconsider this? That is really the basis of the question. And so to answer this, I want to look at different factors that do affect how attached someone can get to you. Okay. The very first one being, of course, attachment style. Things are going to look a lot different if, let's say, it's a six-month relationship and someone is more avoidant versus if someone is more anxious. Those with more anxious attachment styles attach more quickly than those with avoidant attachment styles. Mm -hmm. You know, they might want more commitment sooner. They might, you know, have more hopes and dreams about where the relationship is going to go versus someone who's avoidant. They already have the precedent inside of them to not trust immediately. Yeah, they really struggle with the trusting mm -hmm. people. And even if they do come on strong romantically, <laughs> sexually, otherwise. And they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they might be withholding a lot of their true vulnerability. Absolutely, yes. So this is something that I want you to consider. You know, and, and this can really throw you for a spin because you might find out later down the line, okay, maybe they really were avoidant, but in the beginning, they were opening up to me about a lot of things. You have to remember when we're first meeting someone, we only know the tip of the iceberg. That's okay? right. There's so much more to the story that, that we probably don't know. Hmm. So as vulnerable as they may have seemed, you know, it might not have been the core wound for them. So consider that. Next is the quality of the relationship. And by this, I mean how vulnerable were the two of you with each other? And also how healthy was the relationship? Most healthy people will revisit the relationships in which they were treated well, in which they had the highest relationship satisfaction, in which they were the happiest in, felt respected, seen, heard, had a lot of fun in. I will put a caveat to this because there is such a thing as a trauma bond where people will keep going back to someone who mistreats them, but that obviously here is not the goal. The goal is to repair a relationship and make it a healthy one, have it be one where you can trust your partner openly and have it be a safe relationship. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you have to think about is a trauma history. Because if somebody has a trauma, it is overwhelming and it's often something they have to suppress or push down and it comes back because their unconscious can only could do that for so long. And so if somebody has had a history with abuse, or neglect, uh, it might be physical abuse or sexual abuse, it can come out in different ways. Obviously, if they've had a sexual abuse history, it could be impacting them when you're trying to have intimacy with that person. And it's going to come out in their bond with you and how safe or unsafe they're feeling. And it may not even be related to you or anything you've done. Another thing is gonna be their relationship history. Mm -hmm. And this one is huge. This is one that people often don't really pay attention to, but if this is their first relationship, a lot of people carry a lot of weight and value to it. And so that can cause them to be more attached than other relationships. Another thing that you wanna note is also stages of life. If the two of you have been through major life changes together and have been through you know, really big experiences together, that can be another thing that really bonds you. Another big one that I see is grief. If you've been with a partner through one of their biggest losses or if a partner has been with you during one of your biggest losses, that can be either a thing that really ties a couple together or 
causes the relationship to crumble. Yeah. So th those are other points where partners can get really, really attached to one another. Yeah, sometimes grief can be so overwhelming that uh, people just can't make it through together, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So consider those things, you know, what aspects of life have the two of you grown in together as a couple? Because those things do make a big difference in, in how attached you are. Mm -hmm. And when you're going through something like grief, you know, you are vulnerable with, with your partner. So, you know, that can be something that's really bonding. I know a lot of the focus of this video has been on the relationship and if your ex thinks it was enough. For a minute, I want to draw the attention back to you and ask you the question, was this relationship enough for you to reconsider it? That's a great point. And more so, was this relationship enough for you to be able to work through those issues that caused the breakup to begin with? You know, and or to work on those relationship skills to make your relationship stronger than ever. And outside of just this relationship, I know I'm zooming out and out and out, <laughs> outside of this relationship too, you know, is that feeling of connection, of being in love, partnership, companionship, is that enough? motivation for you to be able to make these big life changes. So we always try to draw everything back to mental health, back to working on your attachment, and that's what we really hope to do with this video too. Absolutely. I love the point you just made is, is it enough for you? Mm -hmm. Put aside how much you miss that person or even how much you care about that person. If you get back together, how much of your needs are going to be met. You got to think about that, okay? Because you want to be with somebody who's going to be good to you. Mm -hmm. And that'll make you happy. And you want to make them happy too. <laughs> All right. So hopefully this video made you happy. <laughs> and if you'd like to get our help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name at the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.